Trying to decide between an Audi Q8 and the SQ8? Well, you've come to the right place because I'm driving both of them. The Audi brand is all about forging design with driving dynamics. To get the most out of those four ring qualities in an SUV form factor, there's the Q8 family. Updated for 2024, it gained obligatory front and rear fascia updates, new wheels, and interior trim materials. Want to switch out the DRL pattern? That's a thing now. Overall, it's a subtle freshening from the model that launched in 2018. Interesting thing about the Q8, you'd expect it to be a little bit larger than the Q7, but it's not. This is actually a little bit shorter, though a skosh wider. Um, this is a two-row machine. It only seats five. Q7 has three rows, so it seats seven. The wheelbase for the siblings are the same. I'm driving both Q8 and SQ8 on this press event near Park City, Utah. Beginning with Q8, it starts at just under 75 grand. That's some $7,800 above the more versatile Q7. Yeah, there's some extra standard kit like an adaptive suspension and larger wheels, but mostly the large upcharge is about fashion. Squint and you'll see classic 1980s era Quattro design inspiration. There's a good amount of competition if casting a wide net. Alfa Romeo Stelvio, BMW X6, Jaguar F-Pace, Lexus RX, Mercedes GLE, Genesis GV80, Volvo XC60, and cousin Porsche Cayenne. It and the Audi ride on the same architecture, along with Lamborghini Urus. The Q8's performance mission means a 3-liter turbocharged V6 base engine, making 335 horsepower and 365 pound-feet of torque to move 5,500 pounds of machine. The 8-speed transmission's controller has the heft and feel expected in a premium SUV. Manual shifting is done down low and up high. All wheels are driven on every eight. Drive select modes make a noticeable difference. Now, in order to get night vision and the highly recommended all-wheel steering, the top prestige trim is required. This fully loaded Shakir Gold Q8 stickers for $100,300. Hey, it's got a tow package. Let's start with the standard Q8. Some obviously not the sq8 so it's not going to be as quick off the line but really it's no slouch we're talking zero to 60 in five seconds the turbo six smooth and silky this is a nice engine it's the same six found in q7 the 8s, uh, being an inch and a half wider and riding a tick lower, feels more athletic. At least the hairs on the back of my neck feel that way. The roads outside of Park City, Utah are a driver's playground. Steering is perfectly weighted, there's feel coming up through the wheel, and even in the most aggressive dynamic drive mode, I won't need a dentist visit to replace any fillings. During the press briefing, the Audi engineer said, hey, watch your speed because it's really easy to find yourself going way over the speed limit. Of course, they're gonna say that, um, but darned if they aren't right. I mean, this thing is so smooth and refined. It's got that triple Teflon kind of dynamic about it. Um, yeah, I did find myself going way over the speed limit and there's law enforcement around. Is $100,000 for an SUV good value? Well, maybe a Porsche Cayenne loaded up with similar equipment easily adds 15 large to the price tag. The EPA rates Q8's average gas mileage at 19 miles per gallon and premium fuel is specified. Okay, that's not great fuel economy, but come on, a buyer knows that going in, right? And if you really want an efficient Audi, maybe go with the all-electric e-tron, huh? 
For more full-throated SUV performance, there's the SQ8. Starting at just under $98,000, this fully loaded example of the prestige trim will set your investment banker back a cool $127,000. It includes terrific Bang & Olufsen sound and the luxury package, also, the $6,000 S-Sport package with active roll stabilization and sport rear differential, which cannot be had on the regular Q8. The 4-liter twin-turbo V8 delivers 500 horses, 568 pound-feet of torque, and a refined growl from the hot pipes. Uh, no fakes here. Quattro all-wheel drive and the 8-speed remain. Bigger front discs to handle the V8's extra 154 pounds, too. Of course, SQ8 is going to have more velocity than the standard Q8. Audi says the 0 to 60 dash happens in 4 seconds. And I think it's being conservative. The extra power is nice, but really, it's the sound. Mmm. That is a lovely engine note. Um, and it's kind of in the background because this is a very quiet car. Like the V6-equipped Q8, SQ8's gearbox goes about its business like a savant. The paddles are fun, but the automatic algorithm is telepathic. I spent five minutes in comfort mode just to try it, the rest of the drive in dynamic. Never harsh, even with the 23-inch wheels and low-profile rubber. It's so good, I checked twice to make sure it had engaged. At Autobahn speeds, it's impressively confident and relaxed. Ask me how I know. Audi picked out a very nice drive route, lots of twists and turns in this road, and I was kind of curious if the extra weight of the V8 would affect the handling, and it doesn't seem to. I'm guessing that's the S-Sport package at work. There's almost no body roll, even pushing hard in Utah's tight turns. One more listen to that V8 sound. Hmm, it's like a nice, warm, sonic hug. <laughs> that's needed after knowing how much premium gas the SQ8 sucks down. The EPA average is 17 miles per gallon. The trip computer says closer to 14 since I'm hammering this hard. Uh, those buying a car north of $120,000 probably don't care. The Q8 family has loads of ADAS features, including a very good adaptive cruise control and lane keeping assist. Nothing like Super Cruise, but still very, very helpful. Um, also, there was a crash on Highway 40, so traffic was stop and go. Um, this has traffic jam assist. And I just sat there, hands and feet off the controls. The car drove itself. Very relaxing. If you've seen the Q7 cockpits, the 8's interior will look awfully familiar, and it doesn't change much with the mid-cycle refresh. That's okay. This space, with top-grade materials, is a nice place to do business. This is the SQ8's interior. Leather seats get heat, venting, and massage, though I'd like more aggressive bolstering in a high-performance rig like this. It has all the features that you'd want in a premium performance SUV, including heat for the wheel. Not tons of storage space. The phone charger hogs the console. The rest of the cubbies are well finished. If your community supports it, Audi includes vehicle to infrastructure capability. This is video from my Q7 piece to demo the interface operation. They're the same. Graphics are crisp, the layout is simple, there's haptic feedback and good response. No knob operation, fingerprints will happen. The same haptic touchscreen approach is used for HVAC operation. It's down low and can't be used by feel like physical controls. And using the new Audi App Store, themes can be downloaded. If you're an MLS fan, scarves up or screens up on the display and coordinating ambient light. It doesn't show well during the day. Looks great at night. Q8's overall height is nearly an inch lower than Q7's, and the 8 loses about a half inch of noggin room. Still, it's good for all but the tallest of adults. 
max out cargo room or leg room, plus the back's recline. Knee, leg, and foot room are quite good. The center spine does hog space from the center passenger's Nikes. And really, two grown-ups will be most comfortable here, but three will take short trips just fine. A sloping roof line cuts into hauling ability, but there's no third row cushions to take up space. Q8 gets 30 and a half cubic feet of cargo space with the back seat usable. Points for the little cubbies and classy LED lighting. Unlike Q7, the 8 gets room for a spare tire. Drop or raise the air suspension from here. No powered seat back releases in a vehicle this expensive? Owners will need to hit the back doors to drop those. There's 61 cubic feet to fill behind the first row. That's seven cubes less than Q7 for those needing maximum space. The floor is nearly flat, and there's flexibility with 35, 30, 35 split seats. The Audi 8s are premium vehicles at premium prices. It can be argued the Q8 is getting long in the tooth. Its platform sister, the Q7, reaches back to 2015. The 8 remains a looker. It can be argued it's more handsome than its newer competition. And great driving dynamics are always in style. If you want a nice, luxurious Audi SUV and you're often schlepping a lot of people around, then yeah, maybe consider the Q7. But the Q8 is no slouch when it comes to hauling the family. There's a lot of room in this vehicle, and it looks great. There is no perfect car, only ones that work best for the people that buy it. Q7 outsells Q8 two to one, so clearly practicality sells. That said, Q8 and SQ8 have a lot going for them, especially when commuting on roads like this. If the SQ8 isn't pricey enough for you, maybe check out the RSQ8, the same turbo V8 as the SQ8, but tuned to squeeze out 91 more horsepower and 22 additional pound feet. Optioned like my tester, it's around 147,000 bucks. On this trip, I also drove the Q7 and SQ7, so check out that video. Great to drive them and the 8s back to back. There's a bit of a difference, but shooting four vehicles in a day and a half is a bit much. Hope you got something out of this Audi Q8 and SQ8 video. That's always my aim, to give you great information and opinions without wasting your time. These are the videos that I always wanted to see. And a reminder that Audi brought me to Park City, Utah, put me up in a very nice hotel and fed me good food. None of that matters. I'm here to give you good information, okay? All right, thanks for watching. Remember, subscribe to this channel, click notifications, follow me on social media. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments. I will try to get to you, okay? All right, that's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.